Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and this guy. Hello, Neil Donahue in the shed. How's it going, Martin? Uh, very good, Neil. We have got a very exciting Dirt Shed coming up. Good. We've got some great action from you guys out there. We've got an amazing bike vault. We've got some cool news that's just about to happen. Um, but I just want to fill you guys in on what we're talking about today. Um, Neil, yeah, you. Apparently, Neil thinks mountain bikers might not be the best bike riders in the world. What? <laughs> uh, I did what? not quite sure I said exactly that, Martin, but I did watch the World Cyclocross Championships uh, just the week before last uh, over in Belgium, and there was an amazing section there. They were coming down off this huge man made bridge and onto the beach. The actual race course went onto the beach, through the deep sand, and then onto. They were basically riding through the sea, trying to find the hard sand to go as fast as they could. <laughs> but that bit come off the bridge, it looked like they were going down there at sort of 40 miles an hour. And there was Matthew van der Poel who won the race. Spoiler alert, you should have seen it by now anyway. But he was hitting it so pinned. It was just, so you know how like, you, you know, you're ridden through sand. But imagine hitting it flat out. He just sort of, you know, you're following the sort of, obviously you've got skinny tires on, following the ruts in front of them and just getting sideways and flicking sand up and almost crashing and just, just wriggling the whole way down the beach. And it was just absolutely amazing. Obviously the rainbow stripes were on the line here. So they were taking big risks. Van der Poel yeah. is, you know, one of the best cyclists of all time, I think. We've seen him on the World Cup cross-country circuit. We've seen him winning, was it Milan San Remo? Some of the biggest world road stage races in the world. And we've, yeah. we've seen him do this on a cross bike. And just the way he handles that bike, as an all-round package, well, we're talking about cycling, proper cyclists here, which I'm not sure mountain bikers really are, if you know what I mean. You know, they're not the whole cyclist sort of package. He's just a brilliant example of someone like that who can do everything really, really well. Yeah, I mean, his riding is unbelievable and his uh, determination in a race is fierce. It's absolutely fierce. It's unreal. And of course, he's, he's someone that's taken the very best in mountain biking to the line in Nino Scherer. He's, yeah. he's pushed... He's pushed the very best mountain biking has probably ever had to offer. Yeah. Uh, so he's pretty incredible, right? But uh, I, I think mountain bikers are cyclists. I kind of know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm thinking of like, I know you're gonna yeah. you're gonna move on to Jack Carthy in a sec, but like yeah. like trials and even downhill, I think they're really technical mountain biking disciplines. But they're not really cycling like I see cross country even, or road, or, or cycle across. And we're seeing people like Tom Pidcock and Evie, uh, Evie Richards sort of crossing yes. over those two disciplines and being brilliant cyclists all around, but having the, the skills to do all those amazing things. Yeah, I mean, Evie Richards was, uh, was an absolute dynamite uh, part of the 2020, for what there was of it, 2020 yeah. race season, where she just came in and she was suddenly taking on those short, uh, prelim races before the uh the sunday finals mm -hmm. and really coming in and and uh dominating those races um she didn't translate it into the actual into the full race yeah. um but she, i mean i think she probably is going to so yeah i mean she's definitely another one coming across from cyclocross your point about jack carvey um that, that i wanted to mention is really interesting it's like you're right he's riding lines that people just are it's out of the reach of anyone, maybe anyone, because his trials riding skill and comp abilities are unbelievable. I mean, he's just so technical. But he is starting to ride a mountain bike now, a full suspension mountain bike, because he's sponsored by Orange. Um, and on that bike, he's starting to use those very technical trial skills and learn mountain biking skills, where he's really rolling and flowing over terrain that would be so difficult to ride for anybody else if you weren't a trials wizard. Yeah. So I guess you're right. It's not really cycling. It's more almost like downhill climbing. Yeah. Well, we've uh, and I, we've seen yeah, Danny Mac do that, haven't we? He's gone from his sort of, uh, you know, not niche. Don't want to say trials niche, but he's brought that onto a bike that anyone looks at and says, "Oh, it's just like my bike." And now he's riding these yeah. lines like we saw last week as well with the slab. You know, really seeing these people from one end of the scale really bring it to the middle market and do crazy things on normal bikes. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can never really, you can never really smash a Danny McCaskill or a Jack Carvey or a Fabio Widmer up against a Matthew Van der Poel. <laughs> yeah because their riding doesn't really mesh, but 
somewhere in there is the very best cyclist ever. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy thought. I wonder what you guys out there think. Who, who do you think's the best oh, cyclist or bike rider? What are we going with, Neil? I think... Yeah, I think bike rider bike describes rider. it the best, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the best bike rider in the world? I mean, it could be Neil right there, because <laughs> he's pretty handy. He's not, but well, thanks, Mark. Pretty handy. <laughs> uh, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, but let's get on with the show, uh, uh, starting with a little bit of news. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, it's time for the news. And to kick things off, it's all things Enduro World Series related. Round eight has been confirmed as the Swiss round at the new location of Kranz, Montana. A little lower and a little less gnarly or rocky, janky horribleness than Zermatt, but still an amazing venue. Uh, so really looking forward to when the tour heads there. I think that's going to be some great racing. Next up, it's team news. And first up, Melanie Chapaz has moved to the Brigade Racing Team, who are on the brand new Production Privé downhill bike. It's gonna be really interesting to see that holds up. They've got a really promising, great looking team this year, and that bike's brand spanker. So it'll be interesting to see how the Andorran company does over the course of the entire season, how things change in production, uh, any alterations throughout the year. That's really exciting. Next up, Jackson Goldson. Well, you know, it's come a long way since he's been scooting around shredding his balance bike and he's moved over to the Miranda racing team, which, you know, many people wouldn't have called. So that's a bit of an interesting move, but I think it's going to be really good for him. And it'll be interesting to see how he goes in the future, especially racing World Cups for the first time this year. It's world record time on the news and it's Cam Zink who's beaten his own world record. You may have seen a sandbox edit which featured some insane riding and essentially a great big kids playground of a sandbox. It's some unreal riding from the American and he's broken his own record stomping a massive 110 foot backflip. That is flipping huge. A little bit more event news now and IXS Dirt Masters has been postponed. It was originally going to happen in May this year but that's been pushed back to September. I think we're going to see that happen to a lot of events unfortunately. The latter half of this year I think is going to get very busy but Bike Park Winterberg in Germany well that's still going to see some downhill and Juro slope style and whip off plus loads more going on but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. The UCI have released a load of news for their 2022 season. Some real big things going on there. So we've got the return of XCO heading back to Brazil, which is an amazing event uh, and venue to hold such a cool race. Obviously, watch out for Henrik Avancini there. He is going to be chomping at the bit to try and win a home race uh, on home soil there because, well, you know, he's a big deal out that way. Also, we've got Snowshoe back on the calendar. That is a great venue from a few years back now. That's uh, coming back in. And also the World Champs at Leger, a classic old school downhill venue, which a lot of people are going to want to win. I remember watching that one years ago and that has got some history to it. So that is going to be a great venue for the World Champs. Final bit of news then and full length blockbuster, The Old World is finally released. Well, today it's out on iTunes and blends some mountain biking, BMX, feature length, cinematic greatness for your viewing pleasure. Red Bull TV did sort of put a preview watch out on this. You could check it out, but now it's out and you can go over and see it. It includes some of the best riders for mountain bike and BMX from around the world and is insane. Go head over there, click on iTunes, go watch it. It's well worth it. That's it from the news though. Thank you very much. Back over to you guys. My favourite part of the show, Martin, hacks and bodges to see what people have been doing at home hacking or bodging. Oh man, you cut me off on my sing something right Good. there, Neil. Um, right, we're going to start <laughs> off with. Oh, I like this one. This is really cool. Yeah. I've done this. Have you done I've this? I've done this. Sing, I made a single speeding. I did it for a dirt jump bike back in the day. It works a treat. Yeah, it really does. And this is this was a really common thing that trials riders used to do back in the day. Sorry to bang on about <laughs> trials, but it's all I know, really. Um, it's a really clever thing. Just use those spaces that you would find in between each in individual uh, cog on your, on your cassette. Uh, and you can just use one of those to turn the bike into a single speed. Yeah. And then you use the derailleur as a chain tensioner. That's, That's it. the really clever bit. And you just need, just to, you need to space yeah. out the cassette body so that you get 
like some spaces of some sort to clamp that yeah. cassette thing. I remember 24-7 bikes. Do you remember them back in the day? Yeah, so you, yeah. You used to do a kit and I bought one of their kits. So you just line up, but yeah, you just make it out of Really, them. really clever little thing. And then you've got a wicked little single speeder and it's a great way, just like James has here, to get a mm. bike that was at the back of the garage and you couldn't get working to simplify it and make it a bit more usable. And he says he is. He's going out riding with his nine-year-old son on this steed. Pretty good. It's a nice Gary Fisher bike, that, actually. Yeah. yeah, like that. Good hack. I like know. Yeah, good one. Um, next up, Neil, what is going on here? So this what is, is this? Uh, Kevin. It's not an old bike. It's 2019 Rocky Mountain Growler 50 in Port Elgin, Ontario. Uh, I decided I wanted to change my bike color and didn't want to paint it, so I decided to try and wrap it. Vinyl wrap, just like you see them doing it. to love it. cars. Uh, it took a lot of patience. It only cost me $60. That's pretty good. Yeah, although I mean, it's, it must be hard. It's pretty cool. It must be hard to get it look really neat, but I guess. Yeah, I reckon if you get up close to that, it's maybe not going to pass the test. But from a distance, oh, said yeah. Bet Midler, it looks <laughs> pretty cool. Um, and I tell you what, I used to do this with my uh, Rally Burner Boxer. No, it was a Rally Boxer, yeah. little tiny bike. I used to, I used to make my bike look cool using electrical tape, different types of electrical yeah. tape. So I'm kind of, I'm into this idea. I like it a lot. I do want to say though, Neil, that Rocky Mountain, okay, whoever's in marketing, Growler. <laughs> do you know what? Sorry. I know what, in America, Sorry. Growler is a receptacle that you take to the pub because <laughs> they often have a sign and they say, we fill Growlers because you can go and get your, <laughs> your receptacle, get your barrel full of beer. I've always, it's always made me laugh. In the UK, we, something else we sometimes call a Growler. <laughs> Yeah, in the UK, that does not translate well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Next up, we've got Brady. Oh, I love this. What? This is a this is awesome. I wouldn't have known. Oh, so it's I an old do, toolbox. I wouldn't have. Well, that, yeah, and he's restored it. So it's an old red toolbox. He must have sanded it down and sprayed it up, put some stickers on it. Boom, matches the park tool stand. And that sort of I mean, thing. I've got to say, if I'd seen this photo without seeing the upcycling images that Brady's done, yeah. I would have gone, cool bike cave. Yeah. Love how you've kitted it out with all the newest park tool kit. <laughs> and it isn't. <laughs> Actually, some of it is. Actually, some of it is. But just goes to show Park Tools have done a fantastic job of their branding work because <laughs> everyone just wants their tools to be blue. Very good. Nice. Yeah, Some very, very good nice. hacks this week. Really good. That was sort of an upcycling vibe this week, Neil, because I, I, I thought, uh, you know, we could all use a few things that we could like. Maybe we've got some bit, bit of time on these lockdown days to maybe go down in the garage and find something old and make it bright and shiny. I like it. <laughs> Who knows? Um, if you have got a hack or a bodge or anything else you would like to send into the Dirt Shed Show, then head over to the GMBN Uploader. The link is in the description down below. Um, we want to get all of your bike vault images, your hacks and your bodges, your fails, your bales, and of course your sends. And maybe if you've got a broken part on the old body there, could go in the body bin, but it's up to you. Uh, it's love and hate, the body bin. <laughs> but anyway, let's carry on with the show. We've got some EWS news coming up Ooh. right now from Rick McLaughlin. Hello to you guys in the dirt shed. I hope it is warmer down there than it is up here in Scotland at the minute, but it may be cold, but that does not mean that we are getting any less excited about the upcoming 2021 Enduro World Series season. Two bits of news from me this week. The first is that we have now confirmed the specialised EWS and EWS E Cran Montana. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have spotted that in our calendar release earlier in the year, we simply had Swiss Alps down as a slot. Well, that slot has now been filled by Crans Montana. Now, we haven't been racing there before, but we are very excited to head back to that part of the world. We know it very well, the Valais region, and what should really be a course builder's dream. 2,300 meters of vertical. We've got hand-cut trails, loam, some single tracks, some old bike park. We've got a bit of everything. It comes quite late in the calendar, which means that it could be pivotal for the title race, which is always exciting. On top of all that, we have an EWSE race there, which means that there are no fewer than four different ways for amateurs to get involved. Second bit of news from me is, of course, silly season, the transfer window, the bit that gets us all amped up and excited for the new season starting. 
We've had we've had Laura Charles sign for Orbea Fox. We've had Comensal and the Cube Action team invest in some young talent. Sam Hills confirmed that he will be a Chain Reaction Cycles rider for another three years. And a whole host are coming thick and fast every day. Katie Winton still yet to confirm a former world number three, so all eyes on her. As I say, the next few weeks could be pivotal. Stay tuned to EnduroWorldSeries.com and all our social media channels and hopefully back here on the Dirt Shed Show, assuming that I am not entombed in snow. See you later. Okay, caption contest time. Now, we want to get your captions for this photo. Uh, your very best captions in the comments down below and you could win yourself, not kidding, a GMBN mug just like this. Oof. That's not a bad prize for writing a comment under a video. It's not bad at all. So get involved, give us a comment for that. Caption for that. And uh, we will see who wins next week. It's a good photo, like it. Right, Neil, this is up to you now. You, you're steering the show from this point, okay? We can head on into the body bin for one photo. Ooh. Do, do you want to yes. do it or not? It's up to you. Do. You do? Yeah, why not? You do, right. We're going into the body bin. Warning, warning, it's never much fun in there, but we're never in there very long. If you'd like to skip on to what's coming up on the channel next, then you can do so. But we're into the body bin now with Christina. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. What is that? It's an elbow. That's that's an elbow. Some, there's a big but... screw in there, and they've left something on it. There's a bit of string on it. Shit. Do you know what? It, to me, though, it looks like it's not a screw. It looks like it's a bolt. Yeah. It looks like it's got a hex head on the top. That looks terrible. Uh, we'll say Christina oh. is in Florida. I rode a line I'd ridden multiple times before, no problems. But it didn't go as smooth this time and smashed my elbow when I didn't Ooh. land properly. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Neil. There were more photos from Christina, <laughs> but I'm not going to show them. <laughs> God. Okay, I'm just not going to show them. I'm thinking if you're all out there, you don't need to see it. <laughs> this is enough, but it's good to know that if you do take a bit off the top of your elbow, they can fix it. It's good news. It's good news. My suggestion would be elbow pads. <laughs> Too late for that, yeah. Christina, I'm afraid. Yeah. I've actually done the old radial head. Have uh, you done that before? No, I haven't. Oh, I've done that. It clicks. Clicks. Oh. Just won't stop doing it. Nightmare. Um, did it years ago. I don't know. Uh, right. Shall we have a look what's coming up on the channel this week? Uh, it better be good. Oh, it is. You're in it. Let's have a look. <laughs> well, the how to this week is how to ride when it gets fast. Really fast. Sends of the month is an absolute banger. We've got the top five of each category. Who's gonna win? Check out Sense of the Month. So mountain biking, in fact cycling, has always waged a war with this particular problem. At the end of the day, punctures will ruin a ride with ease. Multiple punctures can ruin your enthusiasm for the sport itself. Thankfully, there are things you can do with whatever setup you have to avoid punctures and limit the chances of it happening when you're out riding. So let's dive in and explore all the ways you can make punctures mostly a thing of the past. Time for the bike vault. We will see some okay. of your bikes you've sent in using the uploader. And yeah, these are some nice. I've got some cool ones this week for you. Well, I've got the bells, Starting so off the with John Scott Spark. Yeah. Um, I. Do you know what? This is what I like. I like a bike like this that just isn't too. Uh, it isn't stealth like you'd like it. Yeah, but but, it's but it isn't too much. It isn't too much. This is an everyday bike. I like it. Good looking bike. Spot, Scott Spark's good bike, actually. Yeah, yeah. You must have ridden a few of those in your day. I've had. Did I ever have one? I'm not sure I did, actually. I've had geniuses and all sorts, but yes. Mm. Uh, they do a Spark and a Spark RC. Spark RC is the one that 
Nino rides is the short travel one. Yeah, well, this one is um, John's, obviously, and it is in Georgia in the USA, Creek Park, mm. Hawk Creek Park. Mm. Uh, very nice. What are we giving? That's a nice. That's a nice. Yeah. It's a good nice. It sets the standard. Solid, I like it. Nice. I like it. Ah, check this out. This has got some detail on it. Mm. I like this one. It's from Lance, Stump Jumper, Specialized. Um, Powder this Ridge. Is in Powder, Powder Ridge. Started off as a 2018 Stump Jumper Comp Alloy 6 Fatty. They used to call them, do you remember that? They used to call them 6 Fatties. Yeah. Uh, completely rebuilt bike with all new parts and custom painted. Nice. Mm, I like it a lot. I mean, Blake would love it, but I think the golden green really goes well. The tan grips mm -hmm. kind of link into the Kashima coating on the fork there and the logo on the down tube. The sort of tan seat, it's all happening. Like tan it. walls, oh God, tan I walls. I like it. I think that's a super. Come on, dude. Let's get the bell started up. Get it warmed oh, up. Oh, look at this. This is from Hans. It's a super nice photo, wow. that's for sure. But what about the bike? That is in uh, Craigieburn Rangers, South Island, New Zealand. I'll keep seeing all everyone riding their bikes and going to the beach in New Zealand. Making me sick. <laughs> uh, heavily upgraded Giant Rain 2, 2015 XT brakes, ice rotors, Renthal carbon bars. Ooh. Rock Shocks Monarch Plus. Um, it's got it all on there. It's cool. Um, it's nice. Nice. The photos. Yeah. Wicked. But it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. I agree. It's nice. Right. Oh, look at that. Martin, up. that is right Whoa. up your strata. Whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. Slow the it's show. The right colours. Well. Let's just take our time here. Mm. This is from Jason. It's 2019 Cannondale Hardtail. It's in the retro colours. They also did this in the blue and yellow. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's an absolute The colours that you would have rode on, beast. surely, back in the day, Mark. Yeah, that, that one is full 1997 team colours, that is. Would we have seen Tinker oh. Juarez riding a bike like that in that colour? Do you know what? I bet you Tinker Juarez has probably got one of those. Probably has. Yes, I bet he has. I bet he has. Um, the guy's still going. Yeah. It's cool. I love, I love, I've got to be, I've got to be honest. I love the lefty. All right. I just, I love the Ocho. It's such a cool idea. Yeah. I know it's very controversial, but it's so radical and nuts. Yeah. It's just never got old for me. I love it. It's a banging looking bike. It's got the MVs on it. It's got oh, gold XX stuff on it. Ooh. I mean, God, ring the bell twice, Bill. Ring it twice. <laughs> nice. Oh, super, nice. super nice. Right, what we got next? Uh, Constantine's Commissar Meta AM29 2020. Oosh. Ooh, this is cool. uh, Hemmer, North Rhine, Westphalia, Germany. Uh, the whole January is pretty bad here, so we took this beautiful snowy day day out to shred some trails. I actually rode Koblenz, which is in the Rhineland, I believe. Uh, that would have been a couple of years ago in January. It was snowing then, it was freezing cold. But that's where Canyon's based at, Koblenz. And the riding around there was amazing. So this is bringing back some good memories for me, actually, except for being very actually, cold. There's something weird about this photo, though. It looks like almost the bike's tiny. Yeah, it looks like it, I know what you mean. something about that blurred background, like the, yeah. like the depth of field, it looks like someone's going to reach in and pick the bike up between their fingers. <laughs> I don't know, it's something strange about it. But it's, what, what, I mean, I don't know that bike, so I'm going to let you, um, let you take it. I one, think yeah. that it's like a wicked bike. It's got a coil on it. I reckon that's a lot of fun, so I'm giving that super nice. Oh, super nice. Love it. Um, next up, right, God, two, I hate it when it's random like this. Two bikes coming in. We're going to ignore the background bike for now, mm, yeah. um, and we're going to go with the front one. It is a Trek. Trek this fuel. This is a Trek fuel. In Espoo, oh, yeah. Finland. Oh man, I love those colours in the snow. It looks sick. That orange really pops. Mm. Riding the snow is never as much fun as I think it's going to be though. No, let's give it a nice. Yeah. It's actually a bad idea unless you're on a fat bike. Yeah. Um, okay, next oh. up, talking of fat bikes. <laughs> look at this. In thing. the desert, from one extreme to oh. the other in New Mexico, <laughs> uh, riding the RSD Sergeant. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry, tan walls <laughs> and on a fat bike. This is too crazy. Mm. This is only, like, all bikes are nice, but some of them are only just nice. <laughs> I think that would be well good fun. <laughs> it would. It does look fun. And the, the geometry looks 
awesome. It does, doesn't it? it? Even the fork. It does. It's got yeah. one of those, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but like an adventure fork because it's rigid, but it's got all those bosses on the side for mounting your guns and swords and knives or whatever too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, uh, it's, it's nice, it's nice, <laughs> and we're out, we're out the bike vault on that one. Right? Well, can you get a super nice on your bike? Make sure yeah. you send it in to the GMBN uploader. Um, talking about GMBN uploaders, we have got some horrendous crashes and some fantastic sends about to happen. But which one is what? You're not going to know until the moment happens. Take a look at these, Neil. There we go, some wicked sense. Oosh. Wicked sense. Some of those things didn't work out quite as planned, but there we are. Nope. Never mind. Never mind. Um, Neil, it's been a fantastic show. Loved it. Um, really, really cool. Great to hear from uh, Rick with the EWS, actually. Start getting yeah. involved in the old EWS series. It's Ooh. going to be awesome. Um, Neil, what are you looking forward to in this next coming week? I'm actually going for three days back to back riding my bike. So that is Ooh. the most exciting thing that's happened to me in about a month. <laughs> I can't wait to see the action from that. It'll all be coming up, of course, on GMBN. Um, make sure you love, like, and share on your social platforms. But for now, it's goodbye from me. And uh, Neil, what would you like to see say? Ya.